It's critical for my mandate that I meet with uh, victims, survivors firsthand. Because see the face uh, of, the, of my mandate is that of a survivor, a man, a woman, a boy or a girl. The main concern expressed by them is the, uh, the uh, access to adequate food. And, and I think it's always difficult for a mother to, to share that with anyone. And, and I think there has been uh, a very frank dialogue and they have expressed uh, the daily struggle in, in really feeding, uh, feeding their children. Uh, there has been a lot of uh, emphasis laid on access to medical care. I think underneath the, uh, the basic medical care that is being provided in the camp, uh, I think there are serious health issues uh, that need to be addressed and for which they do not have the, the resources. This is exactly what I intend to, to do in terms of mobilizing UN Action Network and knocking at the door of World Health, but also member states in, in, in channeling the resources where, where it is required. I've met with the children, I'm quite impressed by the child-friendly space, uh, but behind these smiles, behind these smiles, there are many issues that need to be addressed, the education, and another area where I want to place focus is, is really education, formal education for the, for the children and especially for the girls because I heard that the girls are dropping out because of the culture but I think we really have to encourage girls also to have access to education that is being provided. Uh, and I already have an idea of some states that I whose door uh, I intend to knock at because they are very focused on providing educational uh, facilities in, in camps. Uh, I also think that the livelihood support for the women is, is key. And, and there is a very close link between physical security uh, and uh, economic security. And, and I think many issues can be resolved if efforts are channeled towards empowering the, the, uh, the, the women. This is a, a priority area for me uh, and I intend to send to the Prime Minister El Abadi uh, a policy paper on how other countries are addressing the situation of children born away. Because if we do not address it, we are sitting on a time bomb. It's not only about, uh, about uh, registration, their civil status, their nationality, but it's also about their future, their education and, and the, the whole question of stigma around children born of rape. First and foremost, we have to, to focus on prevention. And my concrete way of doing it is not to look at conflict-related sexual violence in a bubble on its own, but to look at the root cause uh, and, to, and to address uh, the root causes, such as gender inequality and, and discrimination as the invisible drivers. So I'm working also with different, different actors, different uh, uh, stakeholders, and one of them being the national machinery, because this is where we have to start. national machinery for gender equality and women's empowerment. Uh, I think participation, uh, really uh, ensuring a full implementation of, of uh, Security Council Resolution 1325 and other subsequent resolutions on women, peace and security, ensuring that women participate in the public and political life of the country, ensuring that women are part of the peace, uh, peace building process, ensuring that women uh, uh, engage in, in, in uh, prevention, uh, preventive diplomacy, uh, taking women seriously when it comes to early warning signs.